The Homestead Act played an important part in the settlement of the West. Many settlers utilized the act to move on to the American frontier and set up farms. While there were many challenges over time with new inventions, growing towns, and a steady supply of immigrants looking to make a better life for themselves, the American frontier was settled. In the process, entire nations of Native Americans were uprooted and their lives changed forever. The Homestead Act was one of the most influential acts that led to the conquering of the American frontier. The story of the Homestead Act began in 1803 when the United States bought land from France that doubled the size of the United States overnight. The Louisiana Purchase became a beacon for settlers moving westward that were brave enough to take on the hardships of frontier life. Before the Civil War, a similar act, such as the Homestead Act, was introduced to Congress. Opposition from the South said the act would upset the plantation system. Opposition in the North said the act would pull cheap labor used in the northern factories to the West while others said that it would decrease government revenue and damage the value of already existing farms. In 1862, a Homestead Act was proposed again, but this time without the opposition in the South. It passed Congress and was signed into law by President Abraham Lincoln, called the Homestead Act. It became effective on January 1, 1863. It said that any adult who was the official head of household could apply for land out west most of the land advertised was located in the Great Plains, known as the frontier at the time of the Homestead Act. An applicant simply had to pay a filing fee of $10 when they filled out the land application. It was open to any citizen of the United States and even included a provision that allowed immigrants to apply after they filled out citizenship documents. Once the application was approved, the applicant was awarded 160 acres of land. Stipulations came with the land. A settler could pay the $10 filing fee and follow the rules set by Congress, which matured at five years, giving the settler the deed to the land. Or an applicant could pay $1.25 an acre and live on the homestead for six months in order to obtain the deed. This second option led to a lot of fraud because land speculators bought farms and paid them off in six months, then turned around and sold the land for more. Those who fought against the U.S. government were not allowed to apply. Therefore, former Confederate soldiers were excluded from applying. The frontier life that the Homestead Act created led to several positive changes that occurred socially. The frontier was more racially diverse than any other place. This placed different ethnic groups side by side as neighbors, where it took everyone working together in order to survive. This shared struggle for survival tended to create an atmosphere of equality and democracy. A society that struggled together grew together, regardless of racial background. Many women moved west because they understood that there was more opportunity for women to actually have careers there. Women's rights were more accepted there because women played a much larger role in the daily life there than back east. For a settler to make his new farm successful, every member of the family had to share the daily chores. This led to men and women who split their duties in the middle, earning women more say in the household and beyond. Applicants had to travel out west to the spot where the land was located. Once they accomplished this, they were known as settlers or homesteaders. Within five years of occupying the land, the applicant had to work the land in some form of farming. A cabin had to be built, and a certain percentage of the farm had to be under cultivation. After five years of meeting these conditions, the land was turned over to the settler in form of the deed of ownership. There were many different kinds of settlers who used the Homestead Act. At first, it was mainly poor whites who traveled west to escape the Civil War and have a chance at owning their own farm. They saw this as a way to escape their poverty and become landowners, which had formerly only been a dream to most. A second wave of settlers went west after the Civil War. Many African Americans left the South to escape the systematic racism and tension that existed there. These black settlers 
most of whom were formerly slaves, were called exodusters. A third group that traveled west after the Civil War utilizing the Homestead Act were immigrants. Most of these immigrants were from different parts of Europe, including Eastern Europe. For them, the Homestead Act was a symbol of freedom. It wasn't until they actually arrived that they realized the frontier was a harsh place to live. Weather on the Great Plains was brutal, especially in the summer months when droughts were common and dust storms as big as the sky swept through during periods of hot summer droughts. If settlers' implements for farming, they often broke in the unforgiving soil of the plains. In 1894, 18-year-old Rachel Kaloff traveled with her husband to North Dakota to claim their homestead. She wrote in her diary that her husband was convinced that our best chance to make something of ourselves was to avail ourselves of the offer of free land. It seemed like a godsend to penniless people like us who otherwise could not hope to buy land. Winters were no less harsh on the Great Plains. Blizzard conditions were common and snowdrifts taller than buildings blanketed the countryside, trapping many settlers in their homes until they could dig out. Sometimes these drifts killed livestock by burying them under the snow. Settlers found it hard to live indoors for weeks at a time when snow blanketed the Great Plains. In the spring, the snow melted and sometimes caused floods. The storms could get so bad that entire fields of crops were destroyed. For this reason, few settlers grew anything other than wheat on the Great Plains because it seemed to be the only crop hardy enough to withstand the storms. Many of the settlers had to build their homes out of sod because not enough trees could be found to build a log house with. These were supposed to be temporary homes until actual homes could be built from wood brought in. Because their homes were made of sod, these settlers were called sodbusters. Supplies were always in short supply, so many settlers began to have tools brought in where they would sell them in makeshift tents to settlers. Eventually, these commercial tent communities built permanent structures, and towns began to spring up throughout the Great Plains. Not all of the Homestead Act had positive effects. While the stipulation said that a farm must be created, it did not explain or provide settlers with ways to use the land without damaging it long term. Cattle and sheep overgrazed pastures added with droughts that killed much of the buffalo grass that led the topsoil down. Eventually, these factors led to the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Expansion destroyed forests, exhausted natural resources, and nearly hunted to extinction the wildlife that lived there. Thousands of Native Americans who had already been removed from their ancestral lands were forced to move even further west. The Homestead Act spanned a period of 123 years and impacted the lives of untold millions of people who benefited from the act. The last claim was filed in 2001 by Kenneth Deardoff, who filed an 80-acre claim in southern Alaska, often called the land for the landless. The Homestead Act gave homesteaders opportunities as never before. The United States became the only land where the poor had access to free land. Two million claims were made under the Homestead Act for 10% of the total land in the U.S. There are an estimated 93 million homesteader descendants alive today. 30 out of the 50 states were homesteaded, and the Homestead Act spanned 24 presidential administrations. The Homestead also led to other laws and amendments. In 1866, government leaders became concerned over the loss of forests in the U.S., and had the act amend to include planting trees as a requirement. This led to the Timber Culture Act of 1873. Its consequences were far-reaching and continue to impact the U.S. today, long after the frontier it opened was closed. The purpose of the Homestead Act was to give opportunities to poor segments of society who did not mind to accept the challenges of geography and farming. The outcome was a success because it transferred public lands to private landowners who might not have ever had the chance to land ownership. And while land speculation caused some fraud, overall, the majority of the applicants were from the people it was intended to help. One only had to survive the frontier.